Okay. Our next topic is about production systems. So this is from the IB. So one of the things that we want you to know is that students, you guys, are expected to have a deep enough understanding of production systems to be able to make sound judgments when determining which one is appropriate for a specific job. This includes being able to explain advantages and disadvantages of different production systems and the impact they have on the workforce, environment, and other selection criteria. Okay, so that's something that you guys need to pay attention to um, in the next few slides here is um, how, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these different production systems. And I've, I've outlined some of them for you, um, and you know that's something that we'll talk about in a second. Okay, so when we're considering, these are the selection criteria, when we're considering um, the advantages and disadvantages, we should look at the economy of scale, the value of the product, labor, market forces, and um, flexibility of manufacturing. Okay, so the first production system that we're going to look at is something called craft production. So this is we're talking small scale production. Uh, it's usually centered around manual skills and connects with one-off production um, and possibly batch production. Okay, and you know a really good example of this is like a jewelry maker, right? So there are mass-produced jewelry pieces out there but there are also people who jewelers who do custom things and so you know for instance this guy right here it's a, it's a video showing how he made this engagement ring right and so he's not making mass producing these things he's making a one off design that will um, that one person's buying right so it's it's made for that person so that's why it's a one off production and this is very small scale production now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of that? So um, one thing that we're going to notice is that as we go from, from smaller scale production to larger scale productions, a lot of the things that are over here will move over here. Okay, And this is something that you're going to notice, is that the, a lot of the disadvantages are going to become advantages as we move up, and a lot of the advantages are actually going to flip and come to the other side. Right, So it's, it's sort of a, you know, the craft production like you're not getting economies of scale right because you're not buying a ton of stuff so you're not going to get that that better price because you're buying more product right um, and things like labor costs are, are high um, the value of these things uh, you know it you may not have a bunch of machines that are involved uh, it might take a lot of time and, and um, effort and they're going to be expensive right like that ring is more expensive than if you bought a mass produced ring and every piece becomes more valuable so defects are also more important right like if that guy messes up on that ring well it's not like he can just go and produce another one super easily right so it becomes more ex that one ring becomes more expensive than a mass produced ring all right labor often you have a high skill level and with high skill level comes a lot of money right like people who are highly skilled with things um, are expensive you know like think of things like a, a highly skilled chef is more expensive than somebody who cooks at uh, Burger King okay it just is what it is okay you're able to uh, charge more for manufacturing the product um, it takes a lot of time and skill to learn how to do some of these things and it's much slower than anything like mechanized production um, more care is put into the product Right? And the quality tends to be considerably higher because it's something that was not mass produced. Um, flexibility, you, you have a lot of flexibility because you can actually make it fit the customer and everybody else. Um, but you know, it may be that you don't have you know, disassembly. It can't be disassembled easily and there's no interchangeable parts because it's a one of a kind thing. And therefore it's also more expensive for the buyer. So those are some advantages and disadvantages. And like I said, what you'll notice is that a lot of the stuff here, as we go up in scales of production, because this kind of connects with the scale of production. So this is small scale production. A lot of these things are going to move over here. Okay, then we get to mechanized production. So this is a volume production process involving machines controlled by humans. So these are where humans are building things, but they're building things with machines. And generally this is like a machinist. And so these guys right here, these, these guys work at a shipyard. And this was, would be an example of, uh, a good example of where, you know, usually when you build a ship, it's, it's almost one of a kind, right? But these guys will, will machine the parts for those, those ships. 
And again, you can kind of see this is going to be more small scale production, right? Um, so a lot of the things that you notice is that they're basically the same as the craft production, except that they're using machines this time. Um, and usually there's a lot of skill involved, um, you know, so it's, it's expensive. So do read through these and notice how they're basically the same, except that we're, look, we're talking about using machines and not machines, right? Okay. We get to automated production. So this is now a volume production process involving machines controlled by computers. So basically, instead of having people control the machines like you do in a machine shop, you now have computers controlling it. So you can watch this process right here. This is showing you essentially some of the skills that you saw the machinist doing in the previous video, but instead of a machinist doing it, a computer is doing this. So now you start to see some of the things moving over here and some of these moving back over to this side. Um, so, you know, it's possible to produce at a larger scale because computers are faster than humans. Uh, that means that the raw materials can be less expensive, right? You notice that moved over. Um, mill products that are made by, by people because labor costs are high have um, are more expensive but you also have a really high machine cost right here right so like those computers are not cheap the computers and milling machines that are computerized are not cheap um, you will see that it can be less expensive for the buyer than mechanized or craft uh, production pieces are less valuable so that means that like you know if there are defects that's that's less of a, a, a problem because you're not making one-off things um, you can have greater precision than human human produced products, okay? But probably less flexibility, and we'll get down in that. Um, manufacturing um, manufacturing process require machines, and there's a great amount of time and effort for the design, not necessarily the production, but for the design. So this is where like the designer is is very important in the process. Labor, you need high skilled um, people for designing and computer en engineering, but you know other labor costs are low. You don't have somebody who spent years learning how to mill, mill things by hand. Um, you don't have to pay those kinds of people. So that brings your labor costs down. Um, and that with lower labor costs, you have increased competitiveness, which is good. You have, um, you can see that um, a disadvantage can also be less skilled labor. So that means that, you know, you have labor dissatisfaction. If you have people who are unskilled, they generally don't get paid much, right? So they, they will have, um, it'll cost them or well they, they might be dissatisfied with their jobs um, you'll you can see that um, less care is put into the product because it's made by machine so who cares right you don't take pride of, of ownership like you would if you were in a craft production or if you were milling something by hand um, but the consistency can be higher um, you might have more interchangeable um, parts and it would cost the, the buyer less money and you can disassemble them but there's less, it's less easy to customize, right? You know, uh, a machinist can quickly make something and, you know, know what they're making. You, you know, it, with, with a, a computer um, controlled device, you have to, with the automated process, you have to actually program everything in and that takes a long time. Uh, and so that, that lowers the, the flexibility. So you have less flexibility as for, for the designer and the customer compared to, you know, a human made thing. Okay, assembly lines. So this is uh, volume production again, where where the um, parts and the products and components are moved continually along a conveyor as the product goes from one workstation to another. Components are added until the final product is assembled. And I want you to have a, a quick look at this. This is a a, a um, VW uh, production line, um, and I want you to just kind of look at what that looks like for um, a. Um, one that's that got humans doing the production and then this is now what we see and these are automated production lines okay so this is the automated assembly production line um, and so computers are doing this and and this is also from Volkswagen so for VW and again you're gonna see that things move over here and stuff that was over here is moving over here so you know machine costs are really high but you can have really high volume it's gonna cost less so that's higher higher potential profits for the manufacturer and assembled products have lower prices right um, it can be less expensive for the buyer um, but 
the manufacturing process requires machines, right? And there's greater amount of time and effort in the design, so that that becomes a, a difficult thing. Um, there's greater pre precision than human-produced products. Uh, labor costs um, are all in the design and engineering, but other labor costs are low, just like in the um, automated, um, because you're not paying high-skilled labor, right? Um, because because of um, low labor cost, then you can have a more competitive price, and you're going to have less skilled labor, which of course is a is a problem too, because skilled people are generally happier in their jobs than unskilled people. Okay, um, and you know doesn't there's not a lot of pride of work. Um, this is slower than mass mass production, but still um, it it has a, a high rate of of production. There's less care making the product, but consistency can be higher. Um, and then there's, you know, sim similar to the last one, there's less um, easily customizable, less flexibility for the designer and the, um, the customer, but uh, the products can be designed for disassembly, there's interchangeable parts, and things are cheaper for the buyer. Okay, that takes us to mass production. So this is a production of large volumes of standardized products uh, on production lines, uh, permitting high rates of production per worker. Okay, and this this is an example of a Lego factory, right? So you can have a, a quick look at, at how production of Lego looks. Okay, and again, this is very similar to the last one to tell you the truth. Um, so, uh, sorry, this should actually should say mass production here. It's very similar to the last one. So, you know, essentially, this is the same. Okay. Which brings us to our next... Oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. There we go. Yeah. That's why it was the same, is I went the wrong way. So anyhow, yeah, uh, it's very similar to the last one. All right, let's move on to CNC, which is computer numeric control. And this refers to uh, computer controlled machines for the uh, purpose of manufacturing complex parts and metals and other materials. And machines are controlled by programs called a G code. Each code is uh, assigned a particular operation or process, and the codes control your X, Y, and Z movements and feed speeds. And then these are examples of our CNC machines. Um, the laser cutter is a CNC machine. You can control, for instance, not feed speed, but laser the laser power and speed. Uh, this is the MakerBots that we have, and again, this is very similar, right? It's, it, the code that you put into the machine is going to have the X, Y, and Z coordinates, and then the feed speed is how fast the filament comes out. And this is our TechSoft uh, CNC router, and again, this is very similar to that idea. It's You can control the speed of the spindle as it's moving, and you are um, basically giving it X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, this is actually really interesting. This is called mass customiza customization. And so these are companies that that um, can produce things like they are mass produced, but you can customize things. And it's very interesting, actually. So please do watch this video and, 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 uh, and see what they're talking about. It's pretty short. I think it's a couple minutes. Um, this connects with the, the computer integrated uh, manufacturing systems. And um, basically, it will it will produce things for um, customer orders. And so you can benefit from the economy of scales, like with mass production, but you, you can produce something that is that is a single item for the basically the same cost as what you would produce something for thousands of items. Okay, so it's, it's a pretty interesting idea. Okay, design for manufacture. So this is where we are looking at um, ways to Specific, uh, specifically optimize um, the manufacturing uh, capability in four aspects. So we're looking at designing for materials, designing for processes, designing for assembly, and designing for disassembly. So um, one of the things that we might do as designers is design for the materials that we're using. So this is designing in relation to the materials during processing. So you might pick particular materials or have particular materials that are available to you and so you would design for those materials. This is a bit like we have acrylic available to us in the design hub so we may design something that's made out of acrylic so that we can um, so that you know because we have it available. We don't have some things available like we don't have uh, uh, polycarbonate so we can't design for polycarbonate because we don't have it available. Design for process would be designing for a manufacturing process. Okay, so again, 
we might specifically in, uh, design something for an injection molder if we had an injection molder. Okay, so that's a design for process. Design for assembly. So this is designing, taking into account the assembly at various levels. For example, components to components, components to subassemblies, and subassemblies to completed pro progress. So you know this is a, an example right here how you might redesign something um, so that there is less and less assembly required. So for instance, this is uh, you, this might be your first. Um, idea of how to assemble this product, whatever this product is, but then you might redesign it so that there are fewer steps. Do I really need to have um, the things that I've cut out in this, right? Um, do I really need to move it, um, then, then I can move it down to something like this. Well, if I make this piece right here is one body, then I can eliminate uh, the need for these bolts. And then actually, if I can, uh, design it so that these things kind of clip in rather than uh, need these brackets to, to keep the handle in there. Well, then now I've, I've taken something that had a whole bunch of different parts. I mean, there's dozens of parts here down to having two parts. And so this would be designing for assembly. IKEA does this all the time. They, they want to try to have the fewest assembly steps possible so that you know, it's simpler to assemble something. And you may not think that as you're putting together a piece of IKEA furniture, but they are actually trying to design something that has less assembly requirements. And then that takes us to our last uh, design for manufacturing um, aspect, which is design for disassembly. So that's basically designing a product so when it becomes obsolete, it can be easily and economically taken apart, and the components can be reused, repaired, or repurposed or recycled, right? And so, you know, this is an example of a phone that was designed for disassembly. So the parts are coming apart easily. They're not glued together, um, you know, in circuit boards. So you could disassemble this. You could reuse, repair, or repurpose or recycle the different parts. Okay, so that it's it's much more uh, user friendly, environmentally friendly, uh, because it's it's easier to disassemble. All right, guys, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.